Hi everyone, I haven't posted in a while and I just wanted to let you know that I'm fine. I hope you are fine too. I'm currently locked down in my uh, apartment. So yeah, I hope everything is well for you. I plan to get back to recording uh, still this week. I have plenty of things I would like to share with you and ideas. So in this video, I would like to use this occasion to clarify some questions that you're asking and that the, que the questions that are being repeated over and over. So the first question you're asking is, do I still use Emacs? And the answer is yes, I still use Emacs. It's my main editor and specifically I find Doom uh, configuration or package or, or distribution or whatever you call it pretty good. I used to be a Vim person and now with Doom I have this, it's a great balance between the features, simplicity and speed. Emacs, Doom, my favorite editor uh, still uh, and I don't plan to change that anytime soon. It's uh, one of my favorite projects, uh, open source projects and uh, yeah, if you haven't heard about Doom, please check it out, Emacs as well. So the next question you're asking is about my font, the font I use in my Emacs videos or others. So I used to use SF Mono, but I switched to another font called IOSFK and specifically I'm using the uh, term S4 flavor of that. So we can check my uh, config on GitHub, my Emacs Doom config on GitHub for details. Another uh, set, another category of questions is about something not working for you in your Emacs Doom configuration. You know, those videos were created a long time ago. Some of them were created more than a year ago. At the same time, the Doom project evolves pretty fast and a lot of things changed. So if it's not working for you, uh, please let me know. Or if you figure it out, also let me know. And then I will either provide a, a annotation for a specific video or maybe a good idea to record a new version of that video with those specific changes. So just let me know and remember that, you know, things evolve pretty fast, especially in this industry. If it's not working, that's maybe the reason. So many people ask, how come I can type you know that fast and they ask me if it's if it's real so the answer is no I'm, I'm not typing that fast it's usually faster um, because <laughs> um, because if I'm using VS code there is this latency input latency which is pretty annoying and it's not VS code fault it's I think related to the Vim plugin and then if I'm recording something I realize that I don't know, maybe it's my computer. It's somehow slower, but maybe that's just an impression. But overall, I'm using some tricks, some Vim related commands that help me to go, you know, faster up, down, uh, through the line, and then to remove paste and, you know, young. I've been using Vim for a very long time. Uh, usually when I'm working on something and I'm you know, focused, I it's usually faster. At least I, that's my impression because on the videos I'm and trying to explain things at the same time, so it's different. So maybe that's a good reason to learn Vim if you think it's fast. It's just a few things that I already have in my you know, muscle memory, let's say, that make this look fast. But then if typing faster is better, I don't know, it depends. I think it's, it's better to just think about a solution before typing it. You know, the, the speed of typing is not that necessary in my opinion, for programmers. Okay, so now regarding the Flutter series, I've seen that you are asking about, like you're, you're asking why we are using this thing and not that thing and why you're using, for example, why you are building your own provider instead of using the, the existing package, this kind of questions. This series, the Flutter series was kind of like an experiment for me because I didn't want to create another tutorial where you have this recipe format. Uh, so what I mean by that is that instead of, you know, explaining the fundamentals, they provide you with a solution you can apply. And you don't have to even understand this. You can just apply it and you can resolve your problems. My tutorial is different in that sense that it's more like a journey for the concepts in Flutter. Some concepts are more important than others, but you need to know those concepts. So it's more like, you know, giving you tools showing you how to use them and then leaving leaving you with this task of figuring out how to put them together if you watch the whole series you will have a better understanding of specific parts 
because they are somehow related. So if you watch a specific video because you were tr you are you are trying to resolve a specific problem, it may not work uh, for you as with other other videos on other channels. The other problem is that I haven't finished this series, so it's not complete. So the, the big picture is, I think, I've seen from comments that some people understood what I was trying to present, but it's not yet finished. Uh, still lacking some something. So I hope I will have time to finish it, and I hope you will enjoy it. But remember that it's more about more about fundamentals, about getting into things. I think it's important if you are interested in Flutter specifically to know how it works under the hood. That's the reason it's it's structured this way, and not as other people are structuring the tutorials. And the other reason is that you know there are certain concepts in in Flutter and, and generally in programming you cannot explain by presenting a simple application. So for example, if someone tries to explain the state management and shows you like a simple to-do list or like a weather application and, and tries to argue that, you know, you should use this state approach over that, just showing you a very simple application, it doesn't make sense. It's, it's not a good approach. So in my tutorial, I wanted to, to build this like a larger application. So you could not only see how, what problems we may have with state, but also how it evolves, you know, through time. When we are building application, we can have certain approaches, like um, we can start with something simple, then we can, we would need something more elaborate. Uh, and we can also combine different approaches in the same application. So I wanted to show that, something that you will have to do when you are creating applications for clients or for companies. When application evolves, then you, you, you see the need for uh, specific uh, things. Another question is why I use VS Code. And I, I use VS Code because I like VS Code, yet there are things that I don't like it. The biggest one is the company that's behind it. <laughs> but it's a great product. They created something really approachable and very easy to, to use. I'm using it specifically because I'm working on this, on this project that uh, helps people understand web programming. I will, I will talk about it in a minute. By using VS Code, I, it's easier to teach people. So I'm also teaching programming outside of YouTube. If I use something like Emacs, it would be too much, you know, too many concepts, too many things at the same time. With VS Code, it's much easier. So that's basically a reason why I'm using that. And I'm also using other editors as well. There is this project called Oni2, which is extremely interesting. I encourage you to check it out. It's like a combination of uh, something in between of a, a model editor like Vim. They have some layer of compatibility with VS Code and it's written in Reason, so it's, it's pretty interesting. So I'm not limited, you know, to a specific editor and you shouldn't be either. Uh, you should, you know, explore and you, you can be, you know, fluent in many things at the same time. You, you don't have to specialize and blindly, you know, stick with one thing. And now I have two announcements. I just launched uh, GitHub a sponsor page. If you like the content I create, uh, consider supporting my efforts. I don't really know how to arrange that. So I was thinking that maybe this could have, this could be like conversation. I would have this like a monetary incentive and you would tell me what videos I, I should, you know, record, what, what matters to you specifically. And then I could, you know, allocate my time uh, in relation to that. This way I could uh, better prioritize my little production capacity on this little channel. At the same time, don't worry though. Uh, it's not something, don't feel that you need to do this or I will produce videos anyway. If you enjoyed my content and you would like to thank me, you know, you can do this uh, this way. And also I'd like to thank people who supported me uh, this far. So I received some, some money <laughs> through PayPal, uh, like donations, tips. Uh, it was a small amount, uh, but it was a nice feeling to as a stranger on the internet, send me some, some money to, with a thank you note, uh, saying that the content I created somehow helped them. Yeah, that's, that's it. So if you'd like to support me, yeah, it's on GitHub. I'll post the link in the description. And the second announcement is that I, I, I'm working on this project. It used to be called Hunsvot. Now it's called uh, Kretas or Kretas. The reason I changed the name is to, to be easier to pronounce. You can, con you can pronounce it Kretas or Kretas or whatever, but I think it's much easier than Hunsvot. This project is about helping people get into web programming. Uh, and I have a favor to ask you. So I, I've started 
creating the documentation for this project. It's somehow difficult for me to write this documentation. It's difficult for me to see what I should focus on next. And it may be strange, but uh, that's my current struggle here. If you have some time, I would appreciate your, your feedback on this. As a teacher, I would like to know if the knowledge or the information you're receiving is good for you, is relevant, is, is um, and of course, as you are learning, you may not know what's important and what's useful, etc. But it's more about the feeling, about the how you um, do. You feel that you are progressing by you know participating by reading this, those words, by accepting this information into your mind. I would like to you know see if I'm doing it right. So is it relevant? Do you feel you are progressing with it, etc. If I can ask you to go to the uh, Critus website and uh, check the documentation, read through this. It's not finished yet. There is a lot of things missing. And just tell me what you think about this. Uh, either in the comments, you can send me an email. How to make it better, how to make it more approachable, easier to understand, which subjects should be covered next, how to connect all that from the point of view of you learning it, how you would like to learn. It's about your impressions and I'll try to see how I can make this content uh, better for you. If, you. if you had some time, I would appreciate that. So yeah, that's pretty much it. That's all for today and see you in the next one.